We're bringing you continuing coverage of proceedings from the Supreme Court. And of course, uh, we're here on the 29th as well when we're expecting the verdict for this particular case. In the studio with me is Dr. Morris Ampel, of course, a regular guest on this show. Dr. Ampel, your first, your thoughts on what has happened this morning. Very brief session, I must say. Yes, uh, I want to uh, say good morning to your charity viewers. I'm so excited to be here. And morning to you as well. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I, I think very interesting uh, cross-examination somehow, interrogation. Very, it's revealed a lot. Very, very revealed a lot. And it has, it's somehow trying to um, not to expose the cases of uh, the councils or the parties, but rather to clarify and then to um, make sure that the judges understand the issues at stake. And so far, so good. It has been very, very um, um, hectic. You know, you, you realize that when it started, it's like, wow, when he took on Phil, uh, Philip Harrison, yeah. he, 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 he became somewhat confused initially because it's like the, 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 the searchlight was, was, was on him and the question that was posed was about his evidence, um, the, the, the confusion surrounding the patients and how he has been able to capitalize the, uh, those patients and it it became a, a problematic in resolving it, but he managed to overcome it. Then yeah. the remaining ones were issues of law, you know, clarification of law, and it has been very, very interesting, but not easy at all for all the lawyers so far. Okay, let's pick on the lawyers one after the other. The EC Council. EC Council is very interesting indeed. I think uh, one of these is wanted to. At find some point, he, he he looked pretty confused. Yeah, definitely, because you see, you have a situation where you. You, for, for, this is very interesting where a lawyer who is supposed to do cross examination is now at a cross examination. Exactly. <laughs> for a, a very interesting <laughs> corner, right? Yes, a very interesting corner based on what you've written. And then it's like you are being tested. The, the, the judges want to expose your weaknesses and, and then bring out your strength. And exactly that's what, uh, uh, what happened. And the EC did not find it easy at all because it was more, uh, the questions that were posed was more based on certain categories that he has made. And then the, the, the judges think that those categories were confusing. And when they gave the opportunity, he tried to um, uh, bring issues that were rather confused issues. And the judges said, no, you can't do it now. You had the opportunity when the addresses were filed. Yes. And then we gave you the opportunity during cross uh, oral addresses to be able to clarify and add. You did not do so. Don't, so don't try to add which. Now he, the issue also came in to help in, in, with the issue of uh, uh, voting without by, by regulation. And then yes. the, 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 the statute that he quoted rather created a lot of somehow confusion, uh, trying to buttress the point that look, uh, fingerprint by, uh, uh, verification is somehow uh, important and then quickly back up. Now the issue with um, 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 I think the president's counsel, Tonita, was more of uh, 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 the law. The law, you know, they, they drill him on the law because he, he did not present any uh, 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 analysis on the on the on the on the uh, this in, uh, petition. He, he argued basically on law, and his argument simply is like, look, biometric verification is not compulsory verified through fi fi uh, fingerprints yeah. and the judges were, were very not comfortable somehow with their opposition they drew his attention on the law and they tried to read the law vis-a-vis -vis the constitution and try to make points that look the voters right to vote is paramount than the the statutes and he was trying to but the article was somehow not not comfortable but he, he tries to, 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 to allow the argument to stay because I know they, this is not a time for them to tell you their position. Exactly. They want to clarify the, 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 the issue. And, and they did very well. I mean, the, ju the, the justices they didn't give any hint whatsoever. That, that is, it's very good because, see, we are living in dangerous times. If you don't take care through this cross-examination uh, interrogation, if you don't do it very well, people will begin to read meaning. Oh, the, the justices have taken a position. So they are very cautious in even answering the question and not uh, uh, telling everybody their opinion, you know, and you, you see some of the justices, interestingly, have not asked any question at all. Exactly. Uh, uh, that shows that they, 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 any position you take, they have their own reservations and they, 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 they have decided to keep quiet. Now, let's come to Chachu. He brought up the issue of retroactive penalization. He went through the biometric registration, you know, giving us, you know, a history, if I want to put it that way. What did you make of, of his um, performance in, in the court? This morning. You know, Tattoo is always very uh, technical. He, he normally confuses even lawyers. <laughs> and then this into active. Uh, uh, some have uh, called him the law. Yeah, uh, okay. issue was somehow confusing to some of some some of uh, the, the members of the bar, including me. And then the judges were also saying that. Yeah, uh, at some we, point you could see on the faces of the even those seated in court. Yeah. You know, they were a bit 
Yeah. Confused. So the judges were like, throw more light on this issue. Break it down to the ordinary person on the street. And still, it became the technical. But what Tattoo was trying to say is that, look, the fact that even, it, I think that was it. Uh, uh, legislation, he was trying to use it to, 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 to demolish the argument of Article 49 of the exactly. Constitution, which says that uh, presiding officers should sign and shall, he says shall, and failure to sign is, 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 is it, it validates those results. And then he was trying to make a, a, a case that look, if the Constitution want an annulment of presiding officers not failing to sign pin sheets, the Constitution should say so. You know, the Constitution should clearly say so that. The failure of presiding officers not to sign the pin sheets should lead to annulment. But once but it is quiet, in the constitution. Come again. Is that part? Is, is that in the constitution? You're no. trying to say that it is nowhere in Thank the constitution. Thank you. He's trying to say that yes. They, 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 he's trying to say that yes. The constitution says that the presiding officers shall is mandatory and he is terminated as a public duty. What? But but I am saying that it's not a public duty. It's a constitutional duty because it's a matter of what the constitution says you should do. Now, he so said the interpretation of Article Forty Nine is not lost on us, then. Yes, yeah, not lost on us. It's quite it, it clearly as what should be done. Immediately, um, uh, votes are counted before it is declared. The presiding officer, officer must do one thing: one sign before you go and declare. But they fail to do so. Now, Chatu is trying to say that that failure to do so is a public duty, okay. and that public duty, if you fail to do so, their constitution is quiet on the penalty. What should happen? And once the constitution has not said that the sh that vote should be annulled, he doesn't want the Supreme Court to read meaning to create to create any retroactive a uh, law, eh? either in, uh, insert it in the constitution or make a law to say that once you fail to sign, then we are now bringing a new law of nullifying the votes. Yeah. So that is the retroactive. He's trying to say that no, don't go back and bring a law that does not exist. So to him, he is trying to justify that look, even if the failure of the presiding officers failing to sign. The sins of the presiding officer should not be visited on the ordinary voter. Okay. So he's trying to make a strong point, and he's raising so many, so many constitutional arguments, sorry, and jurisprudence just to uh, justify. But the judges were quiet, and 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 then I think he was trying to say that he's trying to tell the judges that in interpreting the constitution, please have in mind constitutional principles, and then and then look at the the various intentions and then the purposes of. Um, interpreting constitution. So he made this argument, but as to whether it will sit well with the justices, they are yet to know, and they didn't want to come out. But I just say that look, once the, the constitution does not provide for anything, then don't bring anything like nullification. Mm. But he is saying that look, they, they should rather look at Article 42. We see that the right of the uh, voter is, is, is more paramount, is guaranteed. Therefore, failure of the presiding officer should not affect the, vo the voter. voter. Well, that is it, it, it quite makes some sense there. Yes. Well, depending on where we you look at it from. It. Now, the, the, today, of course, we all knew this was this process was going to happen this morning. Of course, we didn't think that it would travel too far. What people are really looking forward to, and I've been monitoring social media, is uh, the appearance of Sir John or Koyogu Sufriye, the NPP's general secretary. We saw him, you know, briefly uh, in one of the shots. Um, he didn't. He didn't look too worried. He, I think he has psyched himself. He, he has prepared well, prayed a lot. You know, and he knows that there's a lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of spiritual, there was a vigil for him. Definitely a spiritual intervention. And he has, he has planned what to say. You does, know that, does the law know spirituality? I think God rules in the affairs of men. Of and if God rules in the affairs of men, God can touch the hearts of the, 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 the <laughs> justices. So that is the belief. But I, I think he has, he has in mind what to say. And that has calmed him down. So his, his, his game plan is look. What, what kind of posture are you expecting him to put up? I, one, I don't expect him to to to, to represent it by counsel. You should not bring in a lawyer. No. If you bring a lawyer, lawyers, we are used to arguments. We are used to justifying. You lawyers are not used we to. We saw that to in the case argument. of Ken Crunchy. One, he is a, he's, he's, a, he's an early person, very matured, and a shanty man. I don't know whether it's a shanty man. I don't know where it's, it's, it's a background, you know. And then a lawyer, of course, of good standing. So I'm looking at the posture of going there with this attitude of being honest to yourself. No, go and don't pretend. Don't pretend that you are sorry. Be, be, let them see that you've opened up. You are, you are being honest, be truthful. Admit. We said that with our Tubiga, didn't we? Tubiga over 
<laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> the guy's got to a stage. He was not even looking in my eyes. And I said, this is a responsible statement. You know, you know, the one who was trying was someone who is so desperate to beg. Yes. But I think the, the, the judges are not, we, we, are, we should not be seeing Sir John in that mood. He, he, he knew, he, he, he should know the consequences of his actions and what he has said. So he should go boldly to face them, admit what he ought to admit. And if he, he has certain denial, maybe certain portions he, he of... He still the, insists that he, he doesn't know what he's being accused of. Thank you. So, so he is creating a lot of confusion in the mind of all of us as to whether he's going to dare to admit the statements or to say that it is um, they know they've they've, they've done it or something so we we are here to see the poster i think at the end of the day he's going to he, he has this game plan of either going to admit or to say that this is not my voice but i'm sorry you know he has this this and then also play in, in the minds of the uh, judges that look the, the judges should look at his uh, demeanor not after after making those um, utterances but after you should look at how he has been able to mobilize the supporters and so that is the push yeah. that. let me ask you would you say and this one is not coming from uh you know a point of view of a lawyer just you doctor but not yes. a lawyer would you say that that vigil last night was necessary interesting did you see i love ghana I, I, I love ghana because our people apart from being religious it's like they went and exercised their faith. It is their position, right? But I think it was not necessary. It was not necessary because uh, um, um, I believe that it was Sir John who should have done his own prayers. No, people should not waste time to go and pray over what? You know, Sir John knew what he said. He should pray for himself and ask for forgiveness if he thinks that what he said was wrong. But people going there throughout the whole night, and I'm sure as they were praying, Sir John was, was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we wouldn't know. I, I'm sure. You and I were yes, not in his house. <laughs> but I think it, it, to me it was yeah. somehow not uncalled for. But it's interesting. It, it makes the whole thing very interesting. And it adds to the beauty of the whole thing. Like, like one day, one day after this election petition, exactly. you have a good story to tell. You know. So uh, uh, to me, I think um, praying throughout the whole night was not necessary. You could have just pre shot um, two, three players and then advise him as to what to rather to go and see. And I bet he's sitting on pins because um, I, you would probably have thought that this issue would have been dealt with this morning. Well, yeah, now they have to go and come back. I'm telling you, see, I love the um, Justice Atubuan led a panel. They have a way of, you know, the, the suspense them, is just you know, so much. When they came, they ignored the uh, joint issue and then they raised the issue of like, this is interrogation. And uh, Atubuan has a way of creating a lot of um, um, uh, ease in the court. And the way they were able to pose the questions, and he has ignored the issue. And that is exactly what they are going to do. They are going the issue, they are going there to take a break, and then I'm sure they will discuss. Yeah. I think it's an opportunity for them to now say now, part two, maybe, what, what are we going to do? Then they will have some common grounds um, mm -hmm. before coming. And I'm, I'm thinking it's putting a lot of pressure on Sir John now, because as of now, you know that when they come, they are going to deal with your issue. So it's not easy. It's not yeah. easy. And I think people should continue to pray for St. John. Oh, we, are, we are on bended knees praying. <laughs> anyway, now it looks like all of this will be coming to an end pretty soon. Yeah. On the on the 29th. Definitely. Hopefully. Definitely. Uh, there's still confusion as to whether the, the judgment day will be 29th or 4th September. Because they said today, 15 days. Whether 15 working days, uh, minus Saturday and Sunday. Mm. Or I think today... I don't know whether they will clarify that one so that there will not be any doubt. But exactly, I'm sure that that is the end for the whole trial today. And and, and, and it has become very, very interesting and very, um, um, you know, tensed. Today, everybody is tensed. Even as I sit here, I'm tensed for Sir John. And, and, <laughs> and it looks as if we are not talking about Hobson. Hobson, yeah. Well, <laughs> Sir John is a star here. Definitely. But it, it, it's is a difficult issue because of his profession. You know, being a lawyer, one of the things that is so once you have been cited, it means that you are now you are, you are, you are, you are, you are being charged for contempt. It, is a, as, as a, it has a criminal element. Now, you are going there with your profession at stake because you can, you can, you can be um, suspended. You can lose the license. Yes, your license to practice. And your name can be struck out from the rules, uh, the names of lawyers. So it's a, they can even refer to the General Legal Council for those actions to be taken. So I think it's not easy at all. And I, I, it's my prayer that he will, he will, he will, he will, you will come in, in, in such a way that the justice will not even think of uh, that penalty, but just maybe reprimand him. Or I don't know the style, but let's pray and see what Sir John 
But Hopsi Adoye, I think he, I, I think with Hopsi Adoye is somehow cool. But it's not like Sir John. Yeah. He has also made it strong that he said those things uh, before. Before the. the <laughs> so I think uh, he is he, 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 hiding under. Uh, Sir John. Yes. No, because once Sir John is able to say the guinea, it will affect him. Okay. We'll see all that, um, you know, happening when the uh, court sitting resumes. We're going to take a break now. We'll come back soon with more of this discussion and also uh, coverage of the petition day number 48. We'll also join Thomas Adote Papua, the Supreme Court, very soon to know exactly what is going on around the Supreme Court. Stay with us. This is TV3 and the courtroom.